Wow, Sean Porter, Showtime, Sean Porter, lets Terrence Bud Crawford know that he's available to fight. He's still the mandatory. He still wants to fight. He puts his bid in. We're going to talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Make sure you guys click the link in the description to sign up for TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a service and browser extension that I've personally used for years on my channel. Just like everybody on YouTube, I started off with zero subscribers. Now I've scaled all the way up to 200,000 and counting plus subscribers. One of the resources and strategies that I implored was TubeBuddy. So it's great to be working with TubeBuddy right now. I always say invest in yourself. It takes money to make money. Dig in, get TubeBuddy, use my link. And if you're serious about your YouTube channel, it's a great growth hack. Now, let me get into it. Um, this was encapsulated by PBC, their verified page, Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford. They had a series of tweets back and forth to each other. And Sean Porter, this graphic just makes it Ill easier to illustrate instead of showing you each tweet and looking in case there's retweets and all that. So Sean Porter said, I'll be ready in May at Terrence Crawford. So he, he let it be known like, yo, what's goody? I'll be ready in May. Terrence Crawford had respond to that. It says, just stay on standby because now you trying me. Sean Porter responded to Crawford's response. And Sean Porter said, closed mouths don't get fed. And I'm ready to give everybody what they need. Hashtag the best fighting the best. So this whole situation between Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford over the last, I want to say eight months has evolved. Previously, it didn't look like they were expressing much interest in, in talking, but, or in fighting. But I feel like back and forth talk and some things that were said on behalf of team Crawford, like Crawford's man's uh, Bernie. I think Sean Porter is fully tapped in and on board for the fight now interesting enough if you've seen the movie i know what you did last summer and she's all that actor son of actor and actor freddie prince jr he actually chimed in you know which was i didn't even know he's a boxing fan so that's kind of cool again he was in the movie i know what you did last summer and she's all that it says dear terrence crawford and showtime sean porter please fight i promise to buy it so he letting it be known that he'll buy the fight like don't worry about it if you guys get it cracking then we can uh, make the fight happen sean porter said appreciate the love man at least you know i'm down to give you something to buy so sean porter said he's a crowd pleaser and he's ready to make that happen with terrence crawford now i have to give you guys this additional information see here's the actual tweets i'll be ready in may just stay on standby because now you try me because he put oh he put the yawning emojis too. closed mouths don't get fed so here's the inner the interaction and exchange from the two now the thing i gotta talk about is this sean porter he's the mandatory for terrence crawford the fight makes sense i would love to see the fight i don't know if it'll happen bob arum you know offered sean porter a million dollars so they'd have to get past that that picture looked crazy They'd have to get past that and find an amount of money that works out to facilitate the fight and get the fight done. So that's one issue. But beyond that, beyond that issue is ironically enough. And this is what is not pictured in the Fox, the Fox, whatever social media, whoever runs this PBC on Fox, they just showed you the tweets that are right. You know, let me find them there. They just showed you these tweets, right? But what they didn't show you is the day this came out, shout out to Ranger Rollins on Twitter. He had an actual tweet. Let me see if I can pull up his page so you guys can see. Deuce Ranger Rollins. He had an actual post that same day before, before that engagement. And it says that rumors abound that from his source 
they were saying that Terrence Crawford could end up fighting against Jose Cito Lopez. That's that's what some people did not see. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I don't know where it's at. Oh, look, he even said, hold on. It seems as if my tweet has spurred Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford into action, at least on Twitter. Hopefully, Bud changes his mind about Sean being on standby and we can get that fight. Terrence Crawford, Sean Porter. Okay, here it is. So this was the initial tweet. And this was, and this is why you guys got to follow my channel because I kind of collect all the info for you so you don't have to do it. But um, this was not showcased in that tweet from pbc they just showed you one side of it but the reason i'm showing you too is don't get excited like oh sean porter and terrence crawford is bound to happen because the whole reason this happened was probably sean porter seen this tweet you know what i mean i don't know who sean porter follows but he might have seen this and he you know jumped into action like yo you know you could he's putting it out there like sean porter putting it out there like yo we could still fight bro you know what I mean? Don't don't book yourself up. I'll, I'm good for May. So look, Ranger Rollins sources: Jose Cito Lopez is the current front runner to Terrence Bud Crawford's next to be Bud Crawford's next opponent. The bout was previously mooted last year prior to top ranked having Kell Brook for the duties. Bud Crawford's return is currently pegged for a date in late May. So I think with news like this floating on the same day it kicked sean porter into action like because he didn't you know he wants it to be known that he's gunning for that fight and he wants to fight terrence crawford now my thing is this i i don't i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen see look march 11th everything happened march 11th so i don't know i, I really don't even know what crawford's doing like in terms of his career i think he has he, he if he wants to fight I think the better fight is the Sean Porter fight, of course. It's your mandatory, so it satisfies that. And it's, I think you'll get more reward from, in terms of fanfare and like publicity and stuff like, you'll get more recognition. But if the Jose Cito fight happens, ironically enough, that'll probably be one of Crawford's most challenging fights at welterweight. You know what I mean? Even though, yes, Jose Cito Lopez has lost you know he lost to Maidana he lost to Canelo and stuff like that I can I can imagine Jose Cito Lopez he's been on a tear you know what I'm saying and I'm not just saying that Jose Cito has been on a tear and he's been looking good in this like little second run he got going on and he has a lot of momentum so um if Mean Machine in my opinion dropped Terrence Crawford and Jose Benavidez went 12 rounds with Crawford and then got stopped in the 12th and final, then I definitely think Jose Cito Lopez could be a pretty game fight. Now, some people may not want to hear that. Some people, when they hear the name Jose Cito Lopez, they'll be like, nah, you know, look and see he got stopped by Birdo and stuff and automatically want the Sean Porter fight to each his own. I'm just going over what's, what's being said. Um, I think Crawford, you know, the way he's managed his business, He's a, I keep saying the same thing. Ego Stradamus strikes again. He's a terrific fighter. He's in shape, but his options are, are kind of kind of scarce if you think about it. Because at 154, he was talking about moving up, but who can you fight at 154 unless you fight an Al Heyman fighter? There's really no 54 pound, pound fight. Jaime Mugia moved up. Um, Andrade and guys like that moved up. And Ben moved up. So you really have to, at 147, I keep saying the same thing. At 147 and 154, you're beholden to the Al Heyman program. Even Jose Cito Lopez is an Al Heyman fighter. So you, you pretty much, to make any reasonably good fight from 47 to 54, you have to see Al Heyman, which is why people criticize Terrence Crawford for not looking into his business and looking towards the future and re-signing with top rank. That's just the reality of the situation. Now he's in between a rock and a hard spot. He can't really move to 54. The marquee fights like Jamel Charlo or whatever. He wouldn't, in my opinion, have the leverage to 
he Crawford, I don't know if he, his his expectations are going to be reality. That's a good way to put it. Like Crawford told Errol Spence he wants 50-50. So if he does that with Jermel Charlo, it wouldn't even make sense. You know, J Jermel Charlo has all the belts in the division and a killer resume, but one, you know, and that's the Brian Castano fight. So why would Jermel split the pie 50-50, especially when that's his division? You know what I mean? He's the main man at 54, and Crawford hasn't moved any fights. So even if you keep it at 47, the same goes for Errol Spence. Errol Spence has more belts than you. He's done the bigger tickets and the bigger gates and, and these types of things. So you don't really have the cash cow um, advantages over him either. And I think Crawford is now realizing this. And now your options are looking like Sean Porter and Jose Cito Lopez. And, you know, I I like Jose Cito Lopez. So me personally, I'm not like PO'd and, and mad about the fight. But I know the fans, you know, boxing fans are brutal i don't i feel like a lot of boxing fans are gonna be mad if if that's crawford's next opponent because they're gonna look at it and be like yo hold on jose cito lopez but mark my words that's that's a more difficult fight than some people think you know what i mean but you know at the end of the day it's the public perception and then the sean porter fight is a fight that people are hoping for but then your promoter your current promoter bob aram doesn't seem like he's willing to pay a guy like sean porter with sean porter feels he's entitled to getting so you know Crawford he's he's had a very difficult position you know for as many years as he's been in the game at the top level probably since the Gamboa performance in 2014 just look at him Errol Spence wasn't even really like hugely relevant in when Crawford was fighting Gamboa in 2014 but he's he's almost lapped him in terms of star power and branding and appeal mass appeal and ticket sales and you know things like that and now Crawford's at a point where he has to fight and I hate to use it but kind of like secondary PBC fighters like Jose Cito Lopez Jose Cito Lopez I think is a good fighter but he's also a fighter if you look at his box rec he he stepped up and he lost some of them fight even the Victor Ortiz fight he won that one but he was losing on the scorecards he lost to Berto by stoppage he lost to Madonna by stoppage he lost to Canelo by stoppage. People are going to look at that and be like, oh, this is your next bout? Come on, bro. Because Crawford is held in a high regard. So, you know, I still think Crawford's in a very difficult position. Um, I do think Sean Porter would be the fight that would get more respect from the populace. Me, I'm not really mad at the Jose Cito Lopez fight. I'm just telling you. But that's just my personal opinion. I think that's a difficult fight. But based on... The, the fans clamoring for more and more from Crawford and a heightened resume. I don't know if, if a Jose Cito Lopez fight would um, satisfy that craving. So hopefully the, the Porter fight gets negotiated. If not, it looks like it's possible Jose Cito Lopez is the next man up. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Use TubeBuddy. Use ESPN Plus. These are great ways to help the channel continue to grow. I'm one person. I'm a one-man army. And, you know, this just helps me facilitate things and put out more and more content for you great people. 2021 is up. We work. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. <laughs>